Welcome to Toffee TV. It is my man of the match show. Everton beat Doncaster Rovers 3-0 in the Carabao Cup last night. Uh, my man of the match was Tim Irabunum. Uh, this is the second time I've done this out of three games. And he's got man of the match in two of the three games. Um, against Spurs, he didn't have a great afternoon. But he was the pick of the players last night. Now, how this works is, basically in my match reaction, I choose a player of the match. And that's literally from my eyes of what I've just witnessed. I haven't looked at any numbers when I do that. I just give you who I think was Evans' best player on the night. So the, the player that caught my eye the most last night, it was Tim Irabunum. And I've had a look at the numbers today. And we'll go through them and see whether or not my eyes were lying to me or they weren't. So here's Tim Irabunum's basic numbers from last night. So as we can see, 69 touches of the ball. His passing accuracy was 85%. Uh, no goals, although I am disputing this. Flicking off Dwight McNeil's, t you know, um, boot lace and rolling in the corner. I'm not having that as McNeil's goal, but it was credited to Dwight McNeil. So no goals for Tim. One assist, he was given the assist for it. And he had six tackles, which I think was the most on the pitch. So a good performance. There's his heat map as well. You can see where he is much higher in the second half. Won the ball lots of times as well. It's showing up all over the pitch. I thought he had a really, really good game last night. And you want him to stand out in those sort of games, of course. You do. He's more than held his own in the Premier League games that he's played as well as pre-season. And I just thought last night you could tell he's one of those players that just looked head and shoulders above the rest. Exactly how it should be when you're playing those Carabao Cup games. And he performed really, really well. So let's get into some of his deeper numbers then. So we're looking at his possession stats here. He had seven successful dribbles on the pitch. That was outstanding when he's travelling with the ball as a 87.5% dribble success, which is really good. Obviously, the 69 touches we've just spoken about. Only dispossessed once in the game, and he won Everton one foul as well. If you go then on to his passing stats, we can see here, uh, assists one, of course. Uh, expected assists, 0.03. There you go. Uh, 35 successful passes. His passing accuracy just under that 86%, 85.4. And he did create two chances as well. This is something I've, I've noticed with Irabun and what's really good about him, as well as physically being ready. Travels really well with the ball and he, he can't see a pass. And I'm hoping once he sort of gets right up to the fitness. I think when a young player hasn't played a lot of games, I think the manager keeps mentioning his minutes last season equated to like two games of football uh, when you've added everything together. I think the more he plays and the more true fitness he gets, certainly gets up to speed and that level of playing every week and his fitness levels go up. I think we're going to see him driving forward a lot more. I want to see him having more shots. He had one against Brighton, didn't he, which he just bent wide. And he, obviously he's had the shot last night, which led to Everton's first goal. I want to see more of this from Tim Irabun. He can certainly travel brilliantly with the ball. He loves running with it. He's got that power and that scent, and he can create chances. That's what we need from our midfield. You know, for too often over the last few years, we've had Adrissa Garner Gay putting fires out, winning the ball back for us brilliantly. The uh, core in that role, doesn't really create any chances. Gets around the pitch quite well, but doesn't create any chances. Uh, we've had James Garner, who's neat and tidy, and, you know, I don't think he had a great game last night, to be fair, but it was his first game back, and, um, you know, he's, the hour will have done him the world of good. But I think we need someone who can travel with the ball and do that creation a little bit. We had Andre Gomez at times, and that's what he did really well, but the chances created, he wasn't, his final ball wasn't very good, Andre. He didn't get he didn't get anywhere near the amount of goals he probably should have got. And, and I'm hoping Irabun and can do that. Um, really impressed with what I've seen so far. Not getting carried away, of course, but for a player that come in sort of under the radar a little bit, I think he's done really well and long may it continue. Let's move on to other stuff now. So the defensive stats are what I'm looking at here now. He's had six tackles, like I said. His tackles won over half of them tackles, 54.5%. Uh, he won 19 duels overall on the pitch, which was a 76% win ratio for the duels he went in for. Um, 
shot blocked once. Uh, sorry, blocked the shot once in the game, committed three fouls, got two ball recoveries, was only dribbled past once in the game. And if we go from there to a shooting, start some last night, there you go, no goals. Again, disputing. Uh, his expected goals were at 0.06 from where he took the shot from. His XC on target, 0.12. Non-penalty goals, 0.06. The one shot which, of course, did lead to Everton's goal. So, like I said... Really impressed with what I've seen with the Rabunum so far. I'm hoping he will continue to grow into that. I think he's been, for most Evertonians, he's sort of been the surprise package, I think, so far. And listen, it hasn't been a great start. We've played three games and we've won one of them, which was against the League Two side. Saturday will be different. It'll be a different challenge for him. Much sterner opposition, Bournemouth are a good side. And he's going to have to be right on it on Saturday and sort of lead with what he's done so far, continue to grow into that role. But like I say, we need more shots from him. There's nothing nothing coming anywhere near enough from the centre of the park. We saw at the end of the season when Adrissa Garner gave him with a couple of goals, how important it was. Three goals, wasn't it, I think, in the end. He weighed in with, um, with important goals at the time. And that's exactly what we need from our centre midfield players. It's a team that doesn't score enough goals. We know that. The second lowest scorers last season, we need to massively improve that. And hopefully, the Boonham can develop that side of his game. If he can, we'll, we'll be absolutely delighted, won't we? But he, for me, was man of the match. I checked with FOTMOB. I check with Sofa Score. He was Evans' highest rated player in both. In fact, in Fort Mob, they give him nine out of ten. So it was that stronger performance from him. I have got a couple of other notable mentions. I, will I do this every week? Possibly, we'll see. But I have got two notable mentions from last night as well. Two players who I thought did well in the game. The first one is Illiman and Dai. Let's have a look at his numbers. Just basic numbers from last night. So where we can see we've got Andai's heat map up there as well. He had 49 touches of the ball and die in that game last night. 92% passing accuracy for Illy. One goal, uh, no assists. He completed 66% of his dribbles. Took his goal brilliantly, didn't he? Uh, this is the thing with assists. Jake O'Brien got an assist for that, for passing him a ball. 10 yards inside the Doncaster half. Uh, and Dai done it all on his own. But it was a brilliant goal. A real cameo of what he can bring to the team. I think the manager has got to find a way to play him, I think. We've seen in the opening two league games that the creativity side hasn't been there. The, you know, we keep talking about it. A front four that was involved in being Everton's second, you know, sorry, the Premier League's second lowest goal scorers last season. And then Jai, I think, and then Jai, isn't it, is how he says it, Um he just offers us something different, travels with the ball. He put a hell of a cross in for Beto as well off on the right-hand side. I found it interesting that the manager has said he's opting to use him in wide areas for now. And I was, I'm was, i just wondering, is that a way of getting him up to the pace of the oh, what the manager feels is the pace of the game rather than sticking him off the striker? Because that's where I think that's his best position. I think that's the position he enjoys the most because he can travel in those pockets of space. But Sean Dyche is using him in wide areas and he came off the flank last night to score what was a brilliant goal and an important goal that made it 2-0. So he gets a notable mention from me. He was up there definitely in the run for the man of the match. And one other player before we finish is Beto. Let's have a look at his stats. Here we go. Here are Beto stats from last night. Two shots, a goal, got one. On target, which was his goal. Took his goal really well. You can see his heat map there as well. He had 38 touches of the ball uh, last night. He won 11 out of 18 of his duels overall. And he had a 66% dribble success. I thought Beto did really well last night. Not amazing, but I thought he did really well. He worked his socks off, took his goal really well. Yes, he should have hit the target when and yeah, he put that cross in, which was a tremendous cross. Um I don't know whether he took his eye off it, whether it was too fast for him, but he should have really hit the target with it. But I thought he did well. He engaged them in a battle. Listen, he's not the most aesthetically pleasing centre forward I've ever seen. His touch is a bit ragged at times, but he is a handful. That's what he is. He's got to refine bits of his game, maybe not get too involved in the grappling side of it. Use the ball a little bit more. There was a couple of times when we broke forward and he should have played the pass. He'd done the hard work and he should have slipped one off to McNeil for sure. 
um, and he got caught with it. But I thought he trialled away really well last night, got himself a goal, it'll do him the world of good. He scored against Doncaster last season, didn't he? His first goal on his debut. But he got one last night, took it well. The 90-odd minutes will have done him the world of good. And who knows what the transfer market you know, will bring over the next couple of days. Will Dominic Calvert-Loon leave the club? If so, Beto will start against Bournemouth at the weekend, I'd imagine. So the goal will have done him good. The 90 minutes will have done him good. And I thought he was worth another notable mention from me. Right, that's it from me. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. And I will see you later.